Recording is underway, folks, so welcome to my lecture for Photoshop 2. <clears throat> Today we're talking about clone stamping, um, which is, as far as I see it, basically one of the tools that is most associated with the concept of Photoshopping as a verb. If you've heard someone say, oh, that's Photoshopped or whatever, they're t typically talking about this tool in a, in, um, in association with other tools in Photoshop. This is a big one. So clone stamp, you're going to be, instead of just painting a color, which that was, we I barely talked about it on the first set of notes, but painting a color is very straightforward with the brush. You just pick a color, brush, puts it on. There's brush settings about how that brush looks, but the concept is very simple. You pick the color, the brush paints the color. It's not much harder than that. The clone stamp tool, allows you to pick an area of your picture and use that to paint on your picture. So first things first, you have to set what we call the source area using Alt or Option, depending on which keyboard uh, you have. If you have a Windows keyboard, it'll be the Alt key. If you're on a Mac keyboard, it'll say Option. Um, but yeah, and then you just click and hold the paint. So what does that look like? Um, let me open up the fresh bold and brash. So here's what you're bringing in. Um, now we got bold and brash here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the areas that are on the canvas that are not painted or that are not bold and the bold and brash and replace them with the blank canvas area. So that it looks like a blank orange canvas in Squidward's hands. So to do that, I'm gonna set my source. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key. You'll see I'm getting this little cursor here, this little targeting reticle. So I'll just click somewhere up here. And then you'll see that it's picking up that color to paint. Now is a, um, actually this wasn't on the tools, the tools yesterday. So the brush size we can change with these bracket keys. These are next to the letter P on your keyboard. So the right bracket makes it bigger, left bracket makes it smaller. Pretty straightforward. The other thing is in this little menu up at the top, you can change both your size and also this thing called hardness and softness. So let's take a look at what that affects. The hardness, the, the, the circle will fill all the way. A soft brush is gonna have a nice even blend at the edges. So by default, your clone stamp is going to be, and I'm gonna make a big selection here. So your clone stamp, is a soft brush. So if I click this here, you'll see that it gently blurs out at the edge of where I'm painting. Whereas the other example would be again, I'll set my, my target here, set my hardness up here up to 100. And now you're going to see when I paint, it's filling the entire circle with what it's seeing. So again, this is a hard brush versus the default for, for um, the brush, which is soft, which will be blurry, okay? So let's go back to this. All right. So now we've covered the basics of the tool. So. While you are stamping, how does the source area move relative to where you click? Well, your, the area it is copying from will move corresponding to how you move. Exact same motion. So take a look here, folks. I'm going to set, let me zoom in. A little too much. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in here. So make my brush a little bit more reasonable size. So if, if you notice, I'm going to go ahead. Hold on. There we go. I'm going to set my source. I'm going to alt and click. And then you'll see, I'm going to click, just click and hold my mouse. It's kind of hard to see. There's a little cursor that's showing up that follows with what I'm doing. So you'll see as I come over here, it's trying to now blend in because the, the target area has now moved over his forehead. So now it is painting in the forehead 
as my source area. So you want to be mindful of where you're moving and how and which direction you're moving the clone stamp because it's going to move the source in the same direction you're moving your image. So you don't want it to like hit the edge of the canvas or stuff like that. So we want to brush like this and then maybe come over here, grab a little bit of this source over here, just click in, spread it in a little bit, do a little bit of that, do a little bit of this. And so I'm just spam clicking this, as you can see. I'm just setting my source, I'm spam clicking it a little bit, letting uh, Photoshop blend it in. And that's gonna help me make this look like a, an actual painted canvas is trying to get some of that, the blurring of the strokes and the colors together. So again, setting my source, and then I'm just gonna left click a bunch. You can also go like this. But if you're painting and you're copying all from the same area, it can look kind of obvious if you're not careful. So I encourage you to just frequently set a new source from somewhere else in the, the yellow and the orange, you know, paint it in, shift your source area around a little bit. Maybe you, may, you might need to make your brush smaller in some instances. Although I encourage you that the they look much more realistic, the larger area that you're copying with more blend around it. And tends to make it a little a little bit more respectable looking all right And there it is. So let's talk briefly. I'm actually going to take this kind of in reverse. Um, again, questions go in the chat. If you got any questions at this point now that I've shown you sort of how this goes down, throw them in the chat. Um, define destructive editing and how it is avoided. So what I just did is I cloned directly onto the Squidward layer. So if I made any mistakes, the only option was just to keep undoing all the way back and find where I messed up. Or, you know, just rolling it all the way back to the start. I really only have a few options. So how do you avoid making what we call destructive edits, which is to say permanent changes? Because what I'm, what I'm saying is if I save this and open this file back up, I won't be able to go and undo the clone stamping that I just did. The clone stamping is permanent now if I save this file and close it. It becomes permanent because I've done it directly onto the Squidward layer. So what are some common destructive edits or ways to prevent destructive editing? Basically using multiple layers to do things. Using masks. That'll be our concept for the week next week. Copy the layer you will destructively edit and then turn the copy invisible. So that's one method. Or, this is the one I'm about to talk about, when cloning, clone onto a layer specifically for cloning. So how do you do that? So the default setting for the clone stamp is to clone directly from the current layer only. How is the all layers setting activated and how does it change the tool? So there's a menu of a bunch of different settings that you can find for most tools up here at the very top. So that's where this little drop down menu was. It's also where you will find this all layers, um, this all layers setting from this drop down menu. By default, it'll be on current layer. But what we want to do is set this to all layers, and the reason why. So I'm going to roll this back to the beginning. So I just opened this file. And what I can do now is if I make a layer, uh, my clone stamp, I can clone stamp onto this layer. Whoops. Right. Right. 
So the difference being that I can turn this layer on and off as needed. So that I could also, if I found that I screwed up, just delete it. Go back to square one. Easy peasy. And that way I can, if I saved this and reopened it, I could realize like, oh, I messed up that. I just need to, I need to redo that. I'll just delete that layer then. Um, you know, the, these are just maybe in the short term, like when we're doing easy assignments, restarting ain't that big an issue for you guys because the, you folks rather, um, because, you know, it's meant for, to be bite-sized assignments. So if you restart, you don't have to go all the way back to the, going all the way back to the beginning isn't that big a deal. But when you're doing your own work or some of our larger pieces of work, you want to protect yourself from this kind of stuff. So the assignment, folks, as I was doing was to just get this, get this fellow out of all of our good friend here, Bold and Brash. So we want to have Squidward holding a blank yellow canvas. And I must say... If your if your clone stamp looks exceptionally streaky and bad, I'm not gonna give you credit. So you need to make it look like you tried to effectively clone stamp this. I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect because it probably won't, but if it is just like let's see, what's the most obvious? Yeah, this will look really bad. Yeah, if you're just doing this, it's going to be really obvious, right? So circular, mo if any of you have waxed a car, circular motions, soft area, blend it out, blend it out. So that's the concept. Get old, bold, and brash out, and then, okay, so note. The assignment is here. Let me, it's just to get old, bold, and brash blank, right? Hold on. <laughs> Whew. Whew. So let me, if you want, you may then make a meme with Squidward. So there will be a competition for your memes. Again, the assignment is to just clear the canvas. The assignment for points, for five points, is just clone stamp out the canvas so that it is blank and it looks good. If you want, we're going to vote on memes next week. So you have some memes that you want to put together of things that you can have on Squidward's uh, Bold and Brash Throw it on there. So this was this is what I made uh, on Tuesday in my my PM animation class. So we had a good laugh of it. So that is it, folks. Do the work.